This video will show you the steps to make a six strip split cane fly rod. Rod makers employ a variety of methods to make bamboo rods, but the following steps will be ones used by me. There are many different types of bamboo throughout the world. The one preferred by rod makers is a variety from China named Arundinaria mabilis. It is frequently called Tonkin cane by enthusiasts. This variety of bamboo has sufficient thickness and power fibers for rod making. Technically, bamboo is not wood, but rather a member of the grass family. In nature, it is green, but will cure to a straw color. When talking about bamboo rods, I find some folks think that the rod is one solid piece shaved to a tapered dimension. I'll then explain that it is really a number of tapered strips glued together to form a rod blind. Bamboo columns often come in 12-foot lengths. Some makers prefer uncut columns, but I usually order columns cut into two sections. You should have both a butt and tip section. The butt section will have a wider diameter, and the nodes, the area where the plant leaves out, will be closer together. I usually mark the bottom of both butt and tip sections with red marker so I don't confuse the direction I'm working on. When creating a bamboo rod, you want to inspect the columns for water damage, grower's marks, or insect holes. These imperfections can mar the finish and even strength of the rod. You'll also want to decide whether you want to build a blonde, lighter flamed, or darkly flamed rod. Here you'll see a couple of flame columns versus an unflamed column. I'll use a torch attached to a propane tank to do the actual burning. For this particular rod I'm going to leave the columns blonde. I'm not going to flame them. And you'll notice that I've also put check splits in the columns and this keeps them from splitting further. a column cut in half <clears throat> and there's the internodal dams. I'll cut the butt section into thirds and each strip will be about a quarter inch. They'll be a little bit wider than the tip strips will be. Here I've got six strips for the butt section of the rod. I've got a lot of extra strips left still, but I'm not going to bother to cut them unless I might happen to need some for this rod, and I'll save them for another rod. So from half a calm, I now have 16 strips to use for the tip. Each tip takes six strips, so I'll have 12 to make the two tips, and I'll have four extra in case I come into any problems. <laughs> Knocking off a little bit of the outer part of the nose. 
and also taking a slight indentation under the pit. And uh, later I'll, ex I'll explain why I do that. The rod I'm making is seven foot long. Half of that will be 42 inches. The total length will be 84 inches. Uh, this, these are butt strips, and what I'm going to do is stagger them uh, at a spacing that's called 3x3 three three spacing, because you don't want the nodes directly together because that's a weak point of the rod. So what there will be will be a node here, a node here, a node here, a node here. So they'll be alternating every four inches for both the butt and tip strips. What I'm going to do here is about two inches up from this node, I'm making a mark. And then at 47 inches, and the reason I'm using 47 inches is because I want two and a half inches play on either side. I'm going to make another couple of marks. And that'll make my total at uh, length 47 inches. But again, half of, of the rod will be 42 inches. Then I'm going to cut these sections, and that'll give me the length that I want to work with. Now I'm ready to begin cutting those sections that I measured. So at this point, I've cut the strips to the length I need to begin planing. And the next step is actually going to be node straightening and straightening the strips. But before I do that, I'm actually going to soak the strips in water overnight. And what that will do is make the strips a little softer and more pliable. And um, the process of node straightening actually involves heat. And so that I don't burn the bamboo, I'm going to actually heat it. Uh, wet. So thus I put it in a container of a tube of water. What I'm about to show you now is what I consider probably one of the more difficult parts of making a bamboo rod and that's uh, strip and node straightening, particularly the nodes. Uh, this is an area where f rod makers really utilize different methods to get the same result. Some rod makers will simply sand the nodes down. They could use uh, the one inch belt sander I use or, or regular sandpaper. Uh, some will use a small alcohol lamp and uh, actually burn the nodes to uh, heat them, to bend them. Some folks just simply take a plane and just take the nodes off that way. Some use a scraper to take the nodes off. Uh, I employ a method that actually uses heat through a heat gun to soften the strip and once I've got it softer, I'll often take it to uh, this little jig called a Wara node press to further bend it. And then I have this great device here that uh, I got in trade with a neighbor. It's a machinist vise. <clears throat> and uh, I can then take the strips once they're heated and put them in this. And uh, basically after setting for a matter of seconds, that heat will help to bend the strip into shape. See a hump in this node, and it also needs some straightening. with all of the strips until I get relatively straight and flat strips. Here you have the first six tip strips straightened. Well, that's a tongue twister. Uh, I put weight on top of them because the strips are still a bit wet and as they dry they'll sometimes take a concave shape. Um, I mentioned too that I put a little cut underneath the nodes and the reason I did that is that when I 
press them in the vise, um, the, the bulge on the outer part of the node will tend to push in. It'll have a place to put in if I have a cut underneath, and that's the reason for that. But as I'm cutting the strips into a triangular shape, uh, and they get smaller, all that will disappear. Once I finish straightening the nodes and strips, I begin a process called rough beveling. And what I'm using is a simple maple form in an old low angle Stanley number 60 and a half hand plane. And what I'm trying to achieve is the initial angle of the 60 degree strips. At this point, I finished roughing the strips to an initial 60 degree taper and I'm ready to begin the process of heat treating. Heat treating does two things. It tempers the strips and it also dries out any excess moisture. To accomplish this, I'll first tape the strips and then I'll run them through the string binder. I'll do this in both directions. By both directions, I actually insert the butt in first both times, but I reverse the direction that the string winds. Before I started building, I really had concern about heat treating the bamboo and what was I going to do for an oven? I didn't want to spend a lot of money for one or buy something like a pizza oven. Unfortunately this man named Frank Newman had a great idea for a simple yet effective oven called a vertical heat treating oven. All it is is stove pipe and insulation and the way it works is you have a heat gun on the top through a hole. It comes down one baffle and comes up through the other and it works like a convection oven. I simply put a thermostat in and I gauge the temperature. Generally I'll cook the bamboo for maybe 20 minutes at 350 degrees for blonde, rod, blonde uh, sections. You can see I have the sections in here. After I'm done heat treating, I'll unbind the strips and begin the process of removing the enamel. To do that I'll use a scraper to take off the enamel and then I'll use various grits of sandpaper on small blocks to sand the strips until all of the enamel is removed. I'm now at the heart of split cane rod making, final planing. The planing form is probably the most important tool in making a bamboo rod along with a hand plane. The planing form has both a butt and a tip side. I'll use a dial gauge that measures in thousandths of an inch to set five inch stations on the form marked with red ink. At this time the rod taper will be formed. For this task I'll be using an old Stanley nine and a half inch block plane fitted with a hock blade. Actually I'll be using two planes, one to get close to the form and a fresh plane to get down to the form. I have already done the butt strips and am now setting the form for the tip strips. A well sharpened plane blade helps tremendously. It helps to minimize chips, tear outs, and open seams.
I've completed planing the strips and am now ready for a process called hollow building or hollow scalloping. This provides an additional reduction in weight. I do leave small dams, particularly around the areas of the nodes, and this helps to maintain the wall strength. I'm now ready for the process of glue up. I'm not going to film all of this section because it's a bit time sensitive and my hands will be messy. But basically what you want to do is to lay out all the materials that you're going to need to do the process. I'll apply the glue to the strips. Save all of your old toothbrushes from your dentist uh, when you go there. They definitely come in handy. And what I'll do is I'll roll the strips up after the glue is applied. I'll then take them over to the binder and bind them again. After they're bound, I'll take them over to this plexiglass that I have laying on the workbench. And I'll roll the strips flat and I'll also flatten them with this. Actually, it's a pizza roller. Once I get the strips flat and straight as I can, I'll take them over to the drying closet and I have some cup holders on the top here and uh, as hooks I'll hang them on the cup holders. They'll dry overnight because this type of glue has to gel. It's a two-part glue. It's first in it, I believe, similar to Epon and it has a resin and a hardener. Once the glue gels, in the morning I'll then take the strips out and I'll take them over to the heat treating oven again. This type of glue has to cure. So it will be in the heat treating oven at a low heat of about 150 degrees for uh, three and a half to four hours. And then the strips will be set. At this point, the sections are out of the oven, the strings have been taken off, and the sections have been cleaned. One point of note, if you use Versamid or Epon Epoxy, you'll want to take the strings off, clean and rebind the sections after allowing them to gel overnight before heat treating. If you do not, the glue will set to the string in the oven and you'll have to sand them off. Not an easy task. At this point, the sections are ready to be cut to length and feral. Silver ferrules usually come slightly oversized and need to be lapped to get a good fit. I'll lap the ferrules with light wet sandpaper going down to 2000 grit until I get a smooth but secure fit. Sections have been cleaned and are ready to be dip varnished. To do this I put thin spar varnish into a PVC tube. The area where I do the dipping is our basement stairwell as the height is sufficient for both the dip tube and rod sections. I purchased a small motor from Granger that withdraws the sections at approximately 4 inches per minute and fashioned this on-off switch setup. There is a pulley at the ceiling and the string is 20 pounds backing. Each section will be dipped three times. Between coats of varnish, the sections will be hung in the drying closet with a light on to quicken drying. The stairwell is a hot plate with a vase filled with hot water. 
Prior to dipping, I will put the dip tube in the drying closet with the light on. These processes aid in keeping the varnish warm so it flows more smoothly. I lightly sand between coats and this will help take out any dust nibs or small runs that might occur and aid the following coats of varnish to adhere. is dry, the rod has been polished, and is now finished. One of the goals when building a split cane rod is to do what they call marrying the tips, meaning that the length is the same, the node spacing is in the same position, and the guides are as well. My wife Sally made me this terrific rod sock. <music>